It's not necessarily just for investors. It is actually for anybody who perhaps is already in the financial position to buy that are looking to move into property and that are moving jobs and the timing is just right. But granted, it is very difficult at the moment. If you're literally just starting, you know, you receive a catalog and you're looking to get finance for property and you're just literally making the first phone call. So, you know, there is very little chance that you're unfortunately going to be ready for an auction. But unless you're very lucky or maybe you have, you know, quite a large, you know, 50-60% deposit and you're looking for a top-up on that, then maybe so. But, I mean, that's, that's more the investor type. But um, just really, just more to clarify that. Yeah, point no, that, that's point. interesting to, to know because I think um, a lot of the assumptions that were made were that um, certainly in the inquiries I made of the banks around what had they done for the previous auction around getting people, and I couldn't find any bank who had actually lent, given a pre-auction AIP. Yeah, it's a very, very, it's a very auction. difficult thing. That we have interest. We had indications from one or two lenders that they are looking into the possibility and there's no confirmation or anything like this, it's only just as a sort of point of information, of trying to put together some sort of package, I suppose, mm -hmm. like a fast track package for someone who does want to go to an auction mm -hmm. to, you know, if you are of a, have met the credentials for a loan and, you know, it's basically, you're the exact same person with the exact same credentials, mm -hmm. but instead maybe over a two month process, it might be able to squeeze it into a, a month, mm -hmm. four or five week process. So they are actually looking into that on the back of the auction, they've realised that see, a, a lender, when they're lending money, relies heavily on the valuation applied to it by a valuer. That's pretty much what everything comes down to. So the one thing that an auction does bring is that it brings publicly uh, published sale prices, which is impossible to have at the moment. As, as was touched on earlier, there is no property price index, no register like they do have in, in the UK where you have a land registry, where you can look up the sale price of any property on any street at any given time that sold at any given year and you can find out exactly what it sold price for. So you'll know yourself as a valuer even exactly what a house is worth. I mean if I was to ask anyone in the room or if anyone was to ask me I wouldn't be able to tell you what is a property worth in the current market. You'd look at it and you'd go well how do I know? Nothing has sold in the last two years on the same road. Nothing has of its like has sold you know that you can really say is a very good comparison. Or if it has sold we don't know what it sold for because we can't. So it's actually yeah. Um, quantifying the reserve based on the rental, potential rental that's going to come from the property, what sort of assumptions are you making on that? As regards? The rental level. Well, it's, it's one of the tools. It's not the primary tool, but it is one of the tools that we use to set the reserve. Again, I have to mm -hmm. quantify we're not valuing the property. The property could be worth a lot more, it could be worth near the reserve, whatever it is. But just as a tool, we generally, you will find if you say, if you go through the catalogue, you will probably find, like Jeff mentioned earlier, that a lot of the properties, the reserve, if you calculated it out to what the property would rent for, was probably in around 10%, say in the Dublin area. In some of the, the more rural areas, we had yields of up to 20% reflected in the reserve prices. Now, so a lot of them ended up selling for more, and the yields ended up coming back down towards sort of 12, 11, 10 percent. But you know, I mean, that's one of the tools. That's how we would we would look at that. The assumptions, so I suppose. Find, what I'm trying to ask is, on, on what basis are you finding out what the potential rental is for it? Well, a, a lot of the properties we sold. We're assuming what is going to happen to the rental uh, sure. in, in the future. A lot of the properties we sold with tenants in situ. Um, over half the properties were sold with tenants in place, paying rent, signed up to a letting agreement. So, I mean, that's, what, that's the true evidence of the rent value is what it's actually been paid at the moment. Um, we sold 10 properties in the Castle Forbes Square development up on the North Docklands, and we had five of them vacant and five of them tenanted. So, and the entire block was completely fully let. We actually managed the block as well, and it was fully let. So, you know, the five that were vacant, it's a pretty safe assumption that you would get the same rent as the five that were, were occupied. Um, but no, I mean, you're, you're very correct and it's something that a buyer has to take into account as to what are the likely fluctuations of rent over the coming years, you know. I think you'll find that rent fluctuates a lot less than capital value of a property. It has come down certainly in, in recent times and uh, it, it perhaps will go down a little bit more, although uh, from our own uh, experience we have, we have a, a letting business as well. The rental market is, is extremely strong at the moment in, in the main areas, you know, you go to more remote areas it is difficult to rent above a certain level. But the rental market in cities at the moment is very, very strong because the preference still is to rent rather than to buy. So this is purely from an investor angle now. I mean, I don't I mean, it's probably a mixture of investors and, and people looking to buy houses as well here. But just from an investor angle, 
the, the rent, it, there is comf uh, comfort in knowing that the rental market is strong. There is a very good chance that if you find a certain area, you will be able to rent it at a figure that will continue to produce that yield. Yeah? Were you aware of how many ultimate buyers haven't done the survey or haven't got their solicitor to check out the title? No, well, the only mention of... Sorry, I the web. I told you wouldn't be aware of who's looking at the title. Um, you mean, like, actually... So, yeah, well, I suppose we... we, it's, we always, it's always possible that somebody could sell a property that put a bad title at an auction. They couldn't do it by private treaty. But an auction could happen if nobody bothered to check out the title. Before. But certainly this, this was sort of in the news today, um, on Today FM, or on News Talk this morning, where someone on a blog, we still don't know who, maybe, what property is related to, and nothing has come to our attention yet. But obviously that there was word that someone had mentioned that they had bought a property without asking their solicitor to review the documents prior. Now, I mean, that in our case is, is, is a fatal error, and we, you know, we're very stringent in saying to people, you must satisfy yourself to it. And the only thing I will say is that every effort is made to actually put properties into the auction that have marketable title. If we have a property that doesn't have, to have the fundamental marketable title, we do not put it into the auction, because we, do, we have no interest in trying to sell something that can't be sold. Because obviously if anyone does their due diligence on it, and they all come back and say it can't be bought or can't be sold, I mean, that's of no use to us. So what does sometimes go into an auction, though, is you might have properties maybe that, because they're in receivership, you don't necessarily have all the certificates maybe that you might normally have. Um, and certainly from an engineering perspective the, or a surveying perspective, sometimes we like we have to sell properties in the auction that maybe did not have certificates of compliance with planning permission or certificates of compliance with building regulations because the developer at the time, just you know, they weren't in existence for whatever reason. Now, they are all declared and fully disclosed, and we say to people, look, if, you're, if, if it's a problem for you, you know, that's fine, don't bid on the property, you know, move on to another one. But because there are some people out there that are willing, if the price is right, to take on the property and sort those sort of things out afterwards. But they are not what we would call fundamental aspects of a marketable title. Mm. So we, do, we don't put properties in to the, to the best of our knowledge, and ultimately we're guided by our conveyance and solicitors on these. We don't put properties into the auction that are fundamentally unsaleable because of title. So I would want to stress that every effort is made for that because it's of no, it's of no benefit to us. Um, the issue in question, as far as I can make out, and because I don't know which property it was but the, on, on the radio this morning, was possibly where a lot of receivership properties, solicitors conveyance and cannot give guarantees or warranties for a lot of issues that you would normally have in a sale contract because they don't have the full history of the property. So it's sold on that basis. So a lot of those properties then, a solicitor will say, well, look, you know, if I was to really hold my hands up, I can't necessarily certify it for finance because of the lack of warranties on a lot of issues. So therefore, that perhaps might be something whereby a chap who bought a property and didn't do any research on it, a solicitor has since told him this. <coughs> you know, the, fundamentally, the title, I think, is clean, but you can't give guarantees on a lot of issues. So therefore, it probably only suited cash buyer. Yeah. 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 Yeah.